Hello and welcome to official Xbox 360 Magazine's OXM report. This week we're looking at Bioshock Infinite. It picked up a stack of awards at E3 last month following a truly jaw-dropping demo. We caught up with the Rationals boss, Ken Levine, to talk us through it. Um, so we're here talking to uh, Ken Levine, uh, creative director of um, uh, Irrational Games. That's exactly is... correct. Uh-huh. Right on. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, just uh, take a look at uh, Bioshock Infinite, which you're showing uh, again for the first time in a year or so. Um, you kind of introduced the songbird that's chasing after Elizabeth. Elizabeth's got these powers. Can you kind of talk us through, talk us through those a little bit and kind of explain how that's affecting the game? Elizabeth is interesting because she is a um, is narrative driver. Uh, of the game, I mean, she well, you her relationship with Booker is a narr- with you as Booker is a narrative heart of the game. But I think at Irrational, we always want to we don't want the narrative and the gameplay running on separate tracks. We want to integrate those as much as possible. So I think you can tell from the demo what's going on with these tears in the world. You see these, you know, in the world of, of Columbia, there are these tears that are windows basically to other versions of reality. Well, everybody can see them. But Elizabeth can manipulate them. She's the only one in the world who can do that. And that's why she's so central and so important to this world. And that's why all the factions in the city of Columbia want her. And they think that she, they're central to their plans. And all she wants is, to, like, what do we all want? She wants to control her destiny. You know, she wants to find her way in the world. A young woman. She's never been able, she's been trapped in this tower since she was a little girl. Booker busts her out. And she just wants to, to control her own life, you know? Her mission, and certainly in the demo here, is to, and, and throughout the course of the game, is to, is to find a way to get control of her powers and get control of her destiny. And you know, in terms of what that means for a gameplay perspective, these her ability to manipulate these tears is, you'll come into a combat experience, and you know, your, your very traditional kind of Bioshock combat experience. Sometimes you have a bunch of enemies, and you've got your your weapons in one hand, your powers in the other hand, and you're and you're and you're fighting it out, and you're making all those choices about your powers and your weapons and the environment. And what Elizabeth brings to the to that experience is that you also see these tears around the world quite often. And you'll see like maybe a turret that's through one of these tears. It doesn't exist in our world. You'll see maybe an access way to another part of a level which doesn't exist in our world. You'll see a skyline that doesn't exist in our world. You'll see maybe you're fighting the Vox Populi, one faction. You'll see members of an opposing faction that don't exist in, in our world. And you can choose one of those to bring in. And you say, I want that one. And then Liz brings that one in. And then she's drained for a while. She can't help you. The demo you just shown, it's, it covers a lot of ground. Like, you know, you, you're down on the ground, you get on the, you get on the kind of skyline, he's kind of swinging up and round and onto an airship and off again and on and off. And it was like, it's a really big space. Like, you know, it just kept expanding and expanding and expanding and coming back. Is it I don't know, a, a kind of open world thing or is that just like a very well-crafted kind of level? I don't want to present it as like, this isn't, this isn't Red Dead and open, this isn't an open world game. You have some very large environments that you're playing within. Um, they're large shooter environments. They're you know beyond what you see in a lot of shooters. But I don't want to present it for something that's not. In terms of how we build them, it's about building it. You know, certainly at the beginning, like that skyline battle you saw is about a third way, third of the way through the game, and we have to build the player up to that kind of combat. Because what was cool about that battle for me is that, so you know, for the people who haven't seen the demo, an alarm goes off, just like a Bioshock one alarm sort of, but instead of little sort of, um, you know, bots flying in, a giant Zeppelin appears. And that Zeppelin's, you know, an AI who's like raining down death on you. And you could just sit on the ground and shoot at him and take him down. It would take, you have to whittle him down. You use all your weapons, all your powers. You can have Liz like bring in a turret. Um, all those traditional tools to bring him down. But what Booker decides to do is actually get use the Skylines to get up there and get actually get on the Zeppelin and destroy it from the inside. And that's all in the simulation. The Skylines are all in the simulation. You know, it's just, you know, you can get, right now, you can hop in that sky and, and jump from point to point to point and really have a ton of control over that. The Zeppelin is just, an, you know, an AI that you can get inside of, basically, with AIs inside of it. Um, you know, we were really inspired by, um, there's a great part of Battle, Star Wars Battlefront 2 um, where, you know, you could, you're in an X-Wing and then you see a capital ship and you can try to destroy the capital ship from the outside, but you can actually land inside and, and, um, and blow it up from the inside, you know, in, in an FPS mode. Um, and and so I really I was really I always love that that bit that feeling of having that choice you know the, the nature of the relationship between Booker and Elizabeth seems quite interesting because she has these powers and she doesn't really seem 
all that vulnerable. Um, just from from what we saw, I mean, he's he's running around and there's and there's just been everyone everyone's coming at him, and she seems you know she's got this ability to manipulate tears and reality. She seems she seems basically unstoppable. Yeah. Just wondering how, how how that works in the game. I mean, it's because we're kind of used to sort of shepherding very weak characters around, and she's very obviously not a weak character. We learned our lesson that shepherding weak characters around is not interesting from a gameplay standpoint because it's it's not. It's you, you actually have a fairly limited view viewpoint on the world, and you're always worried about this over here, and you can't be focused on what you want to be focused on. So Elizabeth is additive to your experience. Like from a narrative standpoint, you have this relationship with her, and that adds a lot. And from a gameplay standpoint, she's there to be your partner and help you, not somebody you need to you don't need to wipe her bum. You know, she she's um, you're there. She's she she's your partner. She's not somebody you have to like babysit ever. For more on Bioshock Infinite, plus all the other games we saw at the show, check out the new issue of OXM, which goes on sale this week.